All right, everyone, welcome back into another fantasy golf video. Going to be breaking down the Masters tournament here for you guys, giving you guys the best picks, the best values, and a first look build. With that, let's go in and get into it. So the Masters tournament is a tournament that we know what to expect from it, which golfers are going to play well and whatnot. Uh, just looking at the past results, we can see that this is a track in which it's going to be a harder scoring track. We already know that, but I do want to point out the 2020 year, that was the COVID year. It was played in the fall, so course history is a little bit skewed because of that, because it played much differently that year than it typically does. But this is a tournament in which course history typically tends to matter more than other events but i do want to point out that's kind of twofold one because the best players in the world are playing in this event and it is a limited field event so those golfers that tend to have good course history are just the best golfers in the world so it makes sense whereas those players that maybe are making their first start here or probably not making that many starts at this tournament over the years they're just not as good of players so it does kind of make sense why we do see the golfers that play well at this course tend to play well at this course but at the same time it is a course where we do want to be focusing on the golfers that have good course history. So some of those golfers, John Rahm, Hideki, Scotty, no shots there, Cameron Smith as well. Prior to last year, three top 10 finishes for him. I do want to point out with uh, like live last year, the live golfers, their results at the Masters were more random than any other major worth pointing out. And that's that's taking a peek at how they played prior coming into event to their results that they had at the masters tournament um you look at patrick reed that's kind of an example now you could look at patrick reed and just say yeah he's a past champ at this event it makes sense why he has good course history he's someone we kind of have to think about in that regard always seems to turn up for this event shane lowry surprisingly very good course history no miscuts here colin morikawa three top 20 finishes he's been playing really well at this tournament so we are just going to get a lot of golfers that have tremendous course history now with that let's go ahead and get into the golfers that are in the best recent form because that's going to be pivotal as well and so we, when we look at the golfers that are coming in with the best recent form i don't think the top two would surprise really anyone you got sky Scheffler who's been playing tremendous golf and you got xander shoffley has been playing tremendous golf it's when we get a little bit lower you got obear popping up in there now i do want to point out obear is someone that's playing this week at the valero texas open and so yes i am recording this a little bit earlier it's on thursday of the valero texas open so if someone like obear doesn't have as good of a week or someone like hideki has a better week like those guys will adjust slightly and i'll be making those updates on monday like i typically would but we are just trying to put our best foot forward right now for now i'm excited i want to get out the masters content for you guys but for the most part we are going to see that some of the best golfers in terms of form are going to be golfers that are lower price this week and that's because well it's kind of twofold you have a lot of the high-end golfers that have been playing in much more difficult events so someone like emiliano grillo he hasn't pl been playing in those difficult events thus he has some really good finishes at some easier events but we can't really knock someone like grillo who has nine straight made cuts like that is very important in pga dfs and in fantasy golf so someone like taylor moore 14 straight made cuts obviously we need to be uh, looking at that that is a good thing so i did want to point out there's a lot of kind of lower price golfers that are coming in with better form and then let's go ahead and take a peek at the golfers that are going to be the best stat fit so again with scotty no shock there um that is going to be the best stat fit i do want to call out the stats i'm looking at currently okay these are going to slightly change like we're going to be looking at bogey avoidance again the masters tournament is a tournament that we know kind of what to look at ball striking total driving you want to be looking at that i have stroke scan total plus in there which is going to take into account the dp tour uh the live tour that's more or less their average finner finish but it's also taking a peek at their results on the pga tour last year for some of those live guys and that's more of a combination stat but again this is going to be more refined next week as well but we get a good sense of which golfers are going to be the best plays as well like scotty Corey Condor, xander uh cameron young potentially uh cam smith dj john rom neiman like we're, we're not really getting too big of shocks there in terms of who are going to be the best stat fits um specialist data i'll get into that more next week specialist data is going to be taking in all the unique characteristics for that week's tournament and put it into one data point the reason why I say I want to wait until next week for that is we kind of know how Augusta is going to play, but I want to take a peek at the green speeds. They're going to be fast. We kind of know that. What's the weather going to be like? You know, all those small nuanced things can add up, and I want to touch on that next week. With that, let's go in and get into the cheat sheet talking about the best plays. So getting into the top plays here, uh, we, really to me, it, it's kind of do we want to pay up for Scotty Scheffler? And I think we're going to be able to. He kind of makes a lot of sense as a play uh, this week. Obviously, he's coming in, checking all the boxes, has the fourth best course history. That's his only kind of knock, if you will. Other than that, best specialist, best effort, best in recent form, top pick in the nine to five model. Uh, he's just been playing elite golf. Like, you really can't ignore just how well Scotty's been playing. And you could argue that his price is too low, given the size of the field. Like, the ownership's been kind of strange on Scotty 
over the past well year really he's finally been extreme chalk the last two events which has made sense but his price has been the highest it's ever been and those were full tournament field events this is going to be a limited field event and he's not priced up as much as he probably should be given how good of a play he is on paper recent form has been spectacular six straight top 10 finishes heck eight out of his past or seven out of his eight past starts have been top 10 finishes we are essentially getting a top five finisher for the most part that is what he needs to finish at though if he's going to pay off this price tag now if you want to go with someone like john rom you could john rom prior to leaving for live and that could be why he wasn't playing as well because he had, we saw some sort of weird correlation that golfers that were leaving for live tended to play much worse on average on the pga tour than th they had like really the year past and so we could be kind of thinking that with john rom now i think john rom's gonna be a spectacular play regardless um i do see it more so as a are we making our builds with scotty scheffler to start or are we going with xander shawfly however and i think we can kind of pass up on rory rory kind of feels like an easy pass unless he has a good finish at the valero texas open again doing this video on thursday we have to take that to account bruce kepka is weird guys just because when he the data that i have going into this is going to be from the pga tour when he left for live he was playing terribly on the pga tour because he was injured so i can kind of look past that again with brooks but we do have to decide what to do with wyndham clark as well so wyndham clark as you guys will see on the masters tournament i, I kind of like to pull this up this is going to be his first start at the masters tournament and again, course history tends to really matter here. Now, I will say, uh, Wyndham Clark has been a top seven play for like the past two months for the Masters tournament, even without that course history. I do think he's a little bit priced up this week, DFS wise. And uh, can he win? He sure. If he had course history and like just relatively good course history, I'd be all in on that take. But he doesn't. And so when we're looking at someone like him at his price. I would much rather get to a slightly cheaper Xander Schauffele, who we do know is an extremely safe play, 40 straight plus make cuts on the PGA Tour, really been playing extremely well thus far this whole season, giving us a bunch of top 10 finishes as well. Two of his events thus far this season have not been top 10 finishes, so six out of eight have been. And so with Xander, like really the only worry with him is going to be that missed cut at this event two years ago. Other than that, a top 10 finish last year, a, a third place finish three years ago, he has kind of proven to me that he is a good enough play. And that's the thing about the Masters tournament, guys, is that there are going to be random missed cuts for golfers that are elite plays. That is just going to happen in some capacity. Like you don't ever want to go all in on a golfer. That being said, I am pretty, pretty high on Xander, especially at this price day, because to me, it's a clear price and mistake. Second best recent form in the field, third best staff in the field. This is clearly the best he has been coming into this tournament thus far he should be in contention to win come sunday and maybe you could argue you know this player's championship that runner-up finish that could end up being a good thing for him that eventually leads to a win this week at the masters tournament i love the fact they did follow that tournament up with a top five finish as well at the valspar championship as well to me that was pretty huge and so lineup wise i think he's going to be an easy click now a lot of people are going to be wondering what to do with someone like Joaquin neiman who has been playing very well thus far in the live tour this season i would argue he's a little bit too overpriced uh, given how he's projected to play this week now again a lot of those stats are coming in from when he was last on the pga tour uh but like, all in all, at that price, like, I feel like he's just a little bit too high priced. So like for me, I, I think I'm perfectly happy to kind of skip over the rest of those plays. Let's go ahead and get into that 8K pricing tier. And I would still consider Hideki one of the best plays. Now, again, I am doing this video right now on Thursday during the Valero Texas Open. There's some stuff going on about Hideki, the classic like, oh, I might be injured stuff, but he wants to get some reps in prior to the Masters tournament. Even if he plays poorly, at this tournament i don't know if i would really take too much in consideration for that now the data would adjust because he wouldn't be in the seventh best recent form he'd probably drop down to 17 would he still be a top three play in the nine to five model probably not if you if you guys are wondering kind of what goes into the nine to five model we are measuring both safety and upside that, that's what we're trying to do and so again if he has maybe a bad finish at the roller texas open we would slightly adjust but the facts are he's been playing extremely well has a 6th 12th first place finish extremely good course history here guys four straight starts of top 16 or better finishes with the victory mixed in here and again this is the best he has looked coming into this event since when we had him as an outright pet three years ago at this tournament i think he's slightly better as a play on paper coming into this event than he was as an outright bet for us three years ago
And so I, I do think just at his price this week for the Masters tournament, he is someone that I think we just have to be looking at as well, especially if you're going Xander to start instead of Scotty. That just makes a lot of logical sense. Now, the next player I'm, I'm kind of worried about, like maybe not being on as much as I should be, is Cameron Smith. He is someone that obviously played extremely well at this tournament prior to last year he's been a little bit hit or miss on the live tour again it is tough to really gauge the results from live tour because live golf whatever because it doesn't really matter it really just doesn't a lot of these golfers have admitted they really only care about the majors and so I'm kind of defaulting to those guys kind of turning up and playing well. Really what I want to see is at least a couple of good finishes in for some of those big name guys like Cameron Smith. And as it sits right now, it might seem crazy. I feel like he's more of a lineup filler. Uh, at the same time, if you guys are kind of gung-ho about Cameron Smith as a play this week, I think it makes perfect sense. He's going to be someone I want to revisit. From there, I don't mind Tony Fino. Uh, Cameron Young looks like a good play. Colin Morikawa, it's pretty crazy that we're getting him at that price tag. But let's go ahead and jump into the like... 8k and lower plays and to me this is going to be the toughest part about this whole week we got someone like shane lowry who just looks like a very safe play on paper he might be a little bit priced up because of that don't get me wrong um but relatively good staff fit like the thing with shane lowry is there's nothing when we look at his data points that are coming in for this week there's nothing that would suggest like we need to not be on him he's been trending in the right direction form wise a 19th, 3rd, and 4th place finish. Love that there from him. His results of this tournament have been great. He typically plays well at majors as well. Like he's a play that on paper, to me, I could get to in like a safe kind of build. And I think he makes a ton of sense. So I'm perfectly happy to get to him. But then from there, we have Matt Fitzpatrick. And he is someone that I probably will get on more if he has a good week this week at the Valero Texas Open. Like if he finishes top 10, he probably becomes a top 10 pick in the 9-5 to five model. That's because he has good results as this tournament. That's because he'd become a much better staff fit as well. And if you look at it, this fifth place finish that he had, came i think as a direct result of there is something weird going on with his driver there's like a weight in his driver grip and so so like i don't really get what what the story was like where was the weight in the grip i i really really do not understand that like i i get how it would throw off your swing but like that was a concept to me that i just didn't really get but whatever he played well Fifth place finish there. Just strange. And then for me, kind of the, the easiest play I think that we have this week is going to be Corey Connors. Now, 73rd place finish at this event last year. Obviously, don't love that. Prior to that, 6th, 8th, 10th place finish. This kind of goes back to the fact that they're going to be good plays that are you know, coming in, checking all the boxes that might just miss the cut. And that's just going to happen. That's Augusta for you. <laughs> like, yeah, you make one small mistake here or there, and it's going to cost you. Now, that being said, I, he's kind of proven that he, he's good to go. Like 15 straight make cuts on the PGA Tour has shown some upside as well. Uh, key stat wise, just incredibly uh, good in all the key stats that we're looking at this week. It's just going to be very difficult not to play him at that price tag. To me, like uh, lineup wise, it's going to be Xander, Hideki, and then Corey Connors. Like that is just too easy of a lineup starting point this week. Now, again, he is playing at the Valero Texas Open this week. If he has a bad finish, maybe we adjust. But for now, we're good to go. And then, yeah, a couple of players that I'm a little bit surprised are popping up as much as they are. We got Sibu Kim here, who, if you want a cheap made cut with maybe a slight potential for some upside, he's a play that I think makes a ton of sense. Top 10 pick right now. Again, this is going to adjust next week once we get some betting odds in there and whatnot. This is going to adjust more so. But I don't think it'd be crazy to call him a top 20 play, top 15 play as well. Uh, he's looking very good on paper. 10 straight make cuts on the PGA Tour. Pretty solid play across the board. I mean, look at all the key metrics that we have here. Top 25 or better and all those. Really like that. But for me, the play that I really can't get away from, especially if he has a good week this week, is going to be Harris English. He is a Georgia guy. Obviously, the tournament takes place in Georgia. Course history-wise, 43rd and 21st place finish. So at the very least, we should be able to get a made cut out of him at such a cheap price. Like, like to me, that is extremely appealing. We look at his form-wise. It has been trending in the right direction as well. Uh, uh, 19th place finish, 21st place finish, 7th place finish, 17th. A couple of bad, badish starts mixed in there, but then a 10th, 14th. So really, as a whole, very good. Top 20 in recent form rank. And just with him as a pick at this price tag, it kind of goes hand in hand. Like, he's clearly too cheap, clearly a great value, clearly someone whose game sets up very well for this tournament as well. Again, if he he's playing in the Bel Air Texas Open as well, if he doesn't have as good of a week, we can adjust. But for now, he's seemingly a play that we just need to go out of our way to roster. So then from there, let's go ahead and get into kind of the values. Like Chris Kirk to me is a value play that you could play. Like I, I wouldn't blame you guys 
three straight make cuts on the PGA Tour. Made the cut at this tournament last year. He's a fine play. Uh, not someone I feel the need to go out of my way to roster, though. EVR, Eric Van Ruyen, has been someone that's been playing better this year. Uh, not good results at this tournament, though, so maybe someone you could look past. I don't think we really need to force any plays in this pricing range just because we are getting a lot of very, very great plays on paper at cheap price tags. But the one play I want to point out is going to be Taylor Moore, who has just been a made cut machine on the PGA Tour as well. 14 straight made cuts now. Uh, 39th place finish at this event last year. He's going to be a top 36 staff at. I mean, really, look at this, guys. 33rd best specialist, 33rd in course history rank, 39th place finish, whatever. Uh, 36th best staff at as it sits right now, and top 20 in recent form. Top 20 pick in the 95 mile at such a cheap price tag. I really can get behind that. Now, again, I don't think we need to go out of our way to roster but I do think there's something to be said about pairing him with Scotty Scheffler together or John Rom for that matter. If you guys are someone that's high on John Rom, I think that makes a ton of sense for the Masters tournament. And then from there, like Lucas Glover is someone that, again, if he has a good week at the Valero Texas Open, probably can get on him a little bit more. Maybe same thing with Denny McCarthy. Could be someone we try to look at a little bit more as well. But let's go ahead and try to finish up this first look build for you guys so as you can see we're at kind of a fine price range 8.6 you know we typically feel pretty good about that i would have loved to have been able to get cameron smith in this build because i would have felt very good about it and been able to close it out i don't mind tony fino i don't mind cameron young but i do see a path where we could slightly adjust this build uh, maybe we get off of Shane Lowry to get to Cam Smith. I feel like Cam Smith just has more upside and he's not priced up too much more to the point where it's going to really hurt your build uh, because you can get to other, you know, pretty good plays that are similar plays. For now, I'd be fine kind of putting in Siwoo Kim. I don't really care if I have that much salary left over, uh, especially as it sits right now. Again, we're going to make some adjustments next week or you know, on Monday and whatnot when I come up with this video again. But for now, I feel like this is a very solid first look build. Again, probably want to get to scotty and you could easily do that so like i guess let's try that let's get to scotty instead we would have to get off of decky you go with taylor moore and then you have 7.1 left over see who can i mean that it's pretty easy to get scotty in your build if you choose to do that like this is a very solid build on paper as well let's go ahead and show you though what the lineup optimizer is telling us to do as well so yeah right now we're, we just got to put two data points in to make this work so i don't know 35 percent max exposure for scotty whatever 30 for Ron, that doesn't matter. Just want to show you guys kind of what the lineup optimizer would tell us is the most optimal lineup as it sits right now. <laughs> so no, no shock, it likes Tagala a decent amount this week, but that is super close to how I see this on paper. That typically never happens, guys. That is crazy to me. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be on Tagala that much. Uh, just don't don't feel the need to, but let's actually do it again with like a 25% max exposure for everyone just to see how it'd be spread out in terms of who it's prioritizing. So Scotty, Xander, that makes sense. Hideki, Cam Smith, that makes sense. Again, not going to be on Tagala that much, but then Corey Connors, English, Fino. I actually feel very good about the lineups that has been out to me right now. Uh, maybe get some Rom in there, maybe get some Brooks in there, but pretty appealing on paper as it sits right now. But that is going to be all for this video, guys. Going to have a lot more coverage uh, for the Masters Tournament coming out on this channel throughout the week. Uh, make sure to give a like and subscribe. Do appreciate that. Let's get to 800 subscribers by the end of the week. That'd be awesome. If you guys want to access to any of the tools that you saw in this video, head on over to 9to5sports.com. They are available for just $10 a month. Give a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Let's have a good week. And as always, let's keep cashing.